Sexual misconduct is kind of an umbrella term for a lot of different offenses. Our policies, which are easily found on our website, give more definitions than you'd ever want. But the definitions are important to figuring out what do I call this thing that has happened to me. We have a positive definition, a positive definition for consent. We also have definitions for sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual exploitation. And then we go into some detail in paralleling what the law talks about as well. You'll see definitions for coercion, force, intimidation, rape, sodomy, assault with an object, um, forcible fondling, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, dating violence. All of these definitions are important to review when something bad has happened to you so that you can find the language to talk about your experience and the university can find you the support to respond. So if something has happened to you or someone you know, here's what I want you to do, four things. The first thing is secure. I want you to secure your safety. Call 911 if you need to. Call Department of Public Safety. Secure your health. It might mean that you need to go to the emergency room or to get some attention at the Wilkins Wellness Center. Secure evidence, that's important as well. Not showering and getting to the hospital for evidence collection are timely choices that can make a big difference. The second thing I want you to do is to talk. Mm -hmm. Talk to someone who can th help you think through your options. If you are confident that you want to report this to law enforcement, do so. If you're confident that you want to report, report it to the university, do that as well. You can go online and report it uh, through our website as a student of concern, or you could go to any employee at the university who can walk you through the steps of making a report. But what if you're not sure you want to report? Who can you speak with confidentially before making that decision? There are a few folks on campus. The counselors in the counseling center folks at the Wilkins Wellness Center, or two of our clergy here, Justin Allen and Dylan Selleck. All of them are places that you can go, people you can go to, to talk confidentially to determine what you want your next step to be. Anyone employed by the university other than that is a mandatory reporter. Of course, you can always talk to a peer educator, a peer support person through the Not Just Women Center. And then I want you to address it. As soon as you can think things through, if you are willing, please report. You know, the person who hurt you may be a risk to our community. We may want to put an alert out that would warn others. So I want you to secure, to talk to somebody, to address it, and then I want you to be restored. You will get through this. It will take time. It's a healing process. And we want to provide you with all the resources you need to take care of yourself, to be restored to the best self you can be, restored to this community that cares for you, restored to a life that can be a new normal. Anytime you report sexual misconduct, here's what the university is going to do. We're going to do what we can to stop it, to prevent its recurrence, to investigate it fully and to make sure that we repair any harms and give you the support you need to get about your work of getting your Shenandoah education. Let me tell you some of the specifics of what happens after that. Once the immediate arrangements for your safety and security have been made, that's when an investigation starts. At Shenandoah, we have appointed a person to do all the investigations to coordinate that. That keeps it consistent and it also, frankly, maintains your privacy well. This person will talk to you, will talk to anyone else who may have been witnesses or knew more about it, and this person will also draw on the person who is accused, if in fact that is a student or staff member or faculty member. Together, you will determine if what happened constitutes a violation of Shenandoah's policy or perhaps even a violation of the law. Based on those various interviews, our investigator determines if it's more likely than not that what's being reported actually occurred. 
For colleges, the standard of evidence is preponderance of the evidence. That means like 50-50 with a hair over on one side. It's very different than in criminal courts where it's beyond a reasonable doubt or clear and convincing evidence. Then based on the severity, the investigator proposes sanctions. And we have got a wide range of sanctions to use for lower level offenses, um, maybe verbal harassment. There's some educational opportunities or the chance to go to counseling. For more serious offenses, the sanctions go through probation to suspension to permanent dismissal from the university. In some cases, if we determine that person is an ongoing danger to our community, we might temporarily suspend or, or ban them from campus until we can do the investigation and be sure that we're all safe. We try to honor the wishes of the victim or survivor. Sometimes, however, a victim or survivor is reluctant. Initially, maybe they don't want anything to happen to the person who harmed them. Maybe they just want it all to go away. We do our best to honor their wishes, but there are times when the offense is serious enough that despite the reluctance of the victim or survivor, the university simply has to act and move forward with the information we have. It's important to us that people not be given the opportunity to repeat the offense and harm anyone else in our community. In the weeks and months to come, I hope you'll be hearing more from us on this topic of campus sexual misconduct. You'll be hearing from us in a positive way. What are prevention strategies? How do we not just talk about misconduct, but talk more positively about who we are as a campus, a place of respect and consent and mutuality and partnership and joy and learning and social justice. Thanks for all you do to help us be that kind of Shenandoah.